Hundreds of Iraqis took to the streets of Baghdad after Friday prayers to protest against Israel and its Western allies over the war in the Middle East. Protesters, many of whom were followers of influential Shia leader Muqtada al-Sadr, burned flags of the US, the UK and Israel during the demonstration. They also waved Palestinian and Lebanese flags and chanted anti-Israel slogans. We have decided to speak against the Zionist and American crimes of killing children, women, and elderly people," said Hakim al-Zamli, a member of Iraqi parliament. اليوم كانت هناك تظاهرة في موقع صلاة الجمعة في مدينة الصدر هذه الصلاة هي أكبر صلاة في العراق ولذلك قلنا كلمتنا ضد الجرائم الصهيونية والجرائم الأمريكية بقتل الأطفال وقتل النساء وقتل الشيوخ وتخريب البنى التحتية وحرق الأشجار وتدمير ما يمكن تدميره لذلك كانت كلمتنا واضحة بأمر من سماحة القائد مقتدى الصدر أعزه <تصفيق> باسمه تعالى يدعوكم مشروع وهناك قتل يجري وهناك صمت عربي واسلامي ودولي ضد هذه الجرائم التي تقتل الاطفال والنساء والشيوخ الله The Israeli military on Thursday said that its troops continued limited localized and targeted operational activity in southern Lebanon. It released video said to show troops in action in southern Lebanon and footage showing the destruction of what it described as militant infrastructure. The Israel-Hamas war began after Palestinian militants stormed into Israel on October 7, 2023, killing some 1,200 people, mostly civilians, and abducting 250 others. Lebanon's Hezbollah group began firing into Israel on October 8, 2023, in solidarity with Hamas in the Gaza Strip. Since then, more than 3,200 people have been killed in Lebanon and more than 14,200 wounded, the country's health ministry reported. In Israel, 76 people have been killed, including 31 soldiers. Colonel Hennady Kovalenko, head of the Department of International Defense Cooperation at Ukraine's Ministry of Defense, discussed how Ukraine could contribute to NATO's transformation. He spoke about it during the Via Carpatia 2024 Forum on Espresso TV. He outlined six strategic lessons for NATO, starting with the need to recruit more personnel. Currently, eight battle groups are planned for Eastern Europe, with four already deployed in the Baltic states, Estonia, Latvia and Lithuania and Poland. Another four battle groups are set to be stationed in Hungary, Slovakia and Romania. Kovalenko suggested that Ukraine could play a role in this process, particularly by sending Ukrainian NCOs and officers to learn from the experience of the Baltic states and Poland in hosting NATO forces. This would include studying the legal frameworks, logistical support systems and other related processes. Ukraine is actively working on a concept to support countries hosting NATO forces, which would also help prepare the country for potential NATO membership. 
According to him, the second valuable lesson for NATO and the EU is the development of remote aerial surveillance. NATO has decided to deploy AWACS systems in Romania and Poland, and in this context, Ukraine can play an important role in the deployment of these capabilities, which we will receive from our Swedish partners. The third lesson concerns airspace control. I was a Ukrainian officer who studied in Estonia in 2003 to 2004, where we participated in the Zokniai and Sioliai exercises. Back then, we explored the possibility of deploying air forces in Lithuania. Currently, the Baltic states are conducting air policing missions in Estonia and Lithuania, and Ukraine could assist by exchanging data with our existing or future fleets, such as the S-16. Kovalenko explained, the fourth lesson is about coordinated defense forces, which Kovalenko called one of the most important takeaways from NATO. NATO is actively developing strategies to defend against missiles and air threats, and we are working on integrating future air defense systems, he said. The fifth lesson involves long-range strike capabilities. Kovalenko emphasized that Ukraine not only receives assistance from NATO, but can also provide valuable intelligence and platforms to support the use of NATO missiles. The final lesson is the fight against cyber and information threats. We are actively cooperating with the Cyber Defense Center in Tallinn and the Training Center in Riga, Kovalenko concluded.